Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the open session. My name is Jasmine, and I'm your oh so generous host. Why do I say that? Because all the information that I have, everything I've discovered, and believe will enrich your life, I give it to you. And the best part is that it's free. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Today is Sunday, June 23rd, and I'm broadcasting live from the Lower Hudson Valley region of New York. Before I go any further, I'd like to start things off with prayer. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to come together by way of Blog Talk Radio. We'll dedicate this time to your service to uplift and build the body of Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, as we give you the freedom to move on the hearts of the listeners for all those participating live as well as those who will join the archive podcast when it becomes available. We'll be careful to not neglect our first order of business, which is acknowledging the Father in all that we do. We give you praise, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today's show topic I entitled, We're Like Family. Let me go through the show description briefly. We want to discover what's important when starting a new friendship or a relationship. I'm pleased to have a special guest joining me on today's show as we dig deeper into this topic. I actually want to refer to a bio that's available on YouTube. I'll keep it brief. And I'm sure you'll be able to do some more searching on your own time. E-Man is a warrior of peace, self-motivation, and advancement. He is fastly becoming popular for his message of empowerment, speaking original words that he performs with music, beats, and arrangements, which he clearly explains to his supporters is not rap, but it's actually preaching with a purpose. It is evident watching his magnetic performance style and artistry that you're experiencing something wonderfully fresh and effective. He's a voice for the generations, a voice for the nations, a voice for change and embitterment. So I just want to bring up our caller, and let's see if this is indeed our special guest. Stand by. The call-in number, just to remind you all, for the show is 917-388-4654. And when you're ready to speak, be sure to press the number 1 on your keypad. That'll be my cue to bring you on the air live. But for those of you who prefer not to be on air, you can go ahead and type your questions, comments within the chat room. So I'm bringing up on the air, the area code is 941, last four digits are 5642, you're on the air. What's going on, this is E-Man. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to do this. I know you've been traveling, and it's been hard to keep up with you. You're a very active man. I try. I appreciate I appreciate you for having me, though. So I have some questions that I've prepared, but... I could always deviate from them depending upon, you know, 
whoever calls in or whoever writes into the chat room. So let's go ahead and dig deeper, why don't we? Sounds good. Let's do it. So I thought you could start off with your testimony so the audience would get a chance to know you better. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone out there is familiar with how you've grown and all that's taken place as far as a recent date with your movement and your music ministry. Right, right. Um, Well, to keep it short, I mean, I'm from Trenton, New Jersey. I moved down to Florida when I was 15 to attend IMG Academy, which is a sports academy. A lot of uh, uh, world-renowned athletes train there from around all over the place, and um, it was a true blessing to be a part of that. Um, I played basketball there, Um, you know, just just a phenomenal experience. Rooming with people from all over the globe just gave me an early impact on people and, and respecting other cultures. Um, just in my room alone, I had uh, people from Portugal, you know, Spain, uh, France, Canada, and even other places in America that I weren't familiar with. So, so it was a great experience. Nonetheless, graduated uh, high school from Greater Atlanta Adventist Academy in Atlanta, finished my senior year up there, moved back down to Florida, um, and enrolled in college, at uh, which was known as Manatee Community College at the time just to uh, get my feet wet in school and see if that was, you know, the route for me and, and, and pursuits basketball even further. Um, just turned out, you know, I didn't, I just wasn't comfortable sitting still. You know, <laughs> I just like to move around, and uh, I just felt like I had something else in me. Uh, and I don't discourage school at all by any means. I don't want to give the wrong message. Like, if you, you know, you go to school, I, I, I encourage that. It just was not for me. Um, so I just want to say that. But, um Started a movement, uh, Next Level Nation, entertainment, sports, media, management, uh, networking system, building positive relationships between all types of people. And that was the vision that came to me. So um, with that being said, you know, it's just a real blessing. With all that embodies what I just said is that I'm a, I'm a person that's for the people, you know. Everything I've ever done, whether it's been events, music, acting, anything, it's just always been about people. And, I, you know, that's just me. Wow, that's awesome to see that journey and the path that you've gone on is really tremendous and the fact that, you know, you've had a lot of moments where you probably felt as though you wanted to give up, but you managed to continue and be determined throughout it all, right? That's right. So talk to me about the movement itself and preach and explain where does that come from, you know, how do we go from this idea of wanting to impart into people's lives to preach? Why to impart into people's lives? Okay. Well, first of all, preach stands for praising regardless, every day, always exalting him. Uh, that's first and foremost. Um, it's it's an acronym for, for that. Uh, my buddy actually came up with it. His name is Gordon. And, um, you know, Preach really is about, you know, a lot of people preach, you know, P-R-E-A-C-H, and and, and, and I get that, you know, and, and that's, that's the right way to spell it, but I don't feel like everybody really keeps it real. You know, that's what it really boils down to. So next level being that that X is just our symbol, I just figured I'm going to replace that C with that X. And, and really what that means is let's just cut it out. Let's just keep it real. Let, let's keep it funky. Tell me the truth. You know what I mean? Like, that's the question deep down in everybody that I feel like nobody wants to talk about. And that's where preach really came from. And it became more of a movement. Like, it's just a word that I started typing one day, uh, uh, and then I figured that I would replace it with the X. And then from there, people caught on to it. We started saying to each other. Um, and it, it actually turned into a song, you know. So it, it, it's a really big thing that's growing right now. But uh, like I said, preach stands for praising regardless every day, always exalting him, and I I think we all know who he is. And then even with Next Level Nation itself, is that an overarching, a larger vision that you have in mind, and then you've got these smaller divisions underneath it? Right. Uh, Next Level is is an entertainment company, um, first and foremost. Uh, Next Level is my brand. 
It is everything that embodies what I'm doing, uh, whether it may be music, uh, my acting, uh, hosting, or other artists that I bring up in the near future with the record label, um, you know, all the way into film, to production. That's what it is, first and foremost. Um, and I feel like it's this global platform that's going to be able to show the world, you know, that we can and we can do it as people. You know, it's a new age. It's 2013. Everybody, uh, you know, has an opportunity to do anything with the Internet. And Next Level is not necessarily uh, a thing that has different divisions in different places, but I'm sure it will grow to that. But uh, right now it's, uh, it's an entertainment company growing uh, with, with my music and, and sooner or later uh, through other artists and things like that. But the movement is strong. Uh, I think it speaks for itself as far as, uh, as, far as the movement right now and ever-growing uh, internationally. So, you know, the thing that makes me and the thing that makes Next Level is the people. The people make this thing grow. That's it. Like, there's no – this thing has been organic from the beginning, and anyone that follows the movement knows that it's just people. You get that T-shirt, you're proud of it, you show it, other people want it, and they like the logo, they see the spirit behind what we're doing, they see that we're keeping it as real as we can, and they want to know what it is and want to be a part of it, and, and that's what Next Level is. That's awesome. So do you feel as though you don't really need to have a traditional backing or a record label at the lead because you can pretty much take advantage of social media and what's available to you online currently? Um, to, a, to a certain extent, yes. Um, and, and to a certain extent, maybe not necessarily. Like I'm not saying that I don't need a record label. I'm not saying that that's not something that I would ever do, like sign or, or partner with a major record label for distribution or, or publishing or, 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 or sign myself. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is what I've been able to do with the help of people has been remarkable. And let's just say, let's just speak about the music alone for a second. In a year's time, I, I built my music brand off of just me releasing music on YouTube and asking people via Facebook, Twitter, you know, Instagram, whatever it may be, hey, if you don't mind, share your feedback with me on, on what you think about this song. Just that it, that by itself has how I've been able to build my brain. And people know that. And they feel connected to the music. They feel like they're a part of it, in which they are. Because with the feedback they give me, I go and I can make a better product. I can feel, I can truly feel what people want. I can truly feel like what they really are, are, are wanting to hear what they really need, you know. And uh, with that, I'm able to not just go in the studio by myself. Although people are not really there physically, I'm able to go in the studio with people's spirit with me and really connect with them with the songs that I make. So um, with that being said, by using utilizing the YouTube platform and, and things like, of that sort, um, from there people hit me up and said, hey, E-Man, you know, why don't you come sing a song at my church? Hey, Amen. Why don't you come sing a song at my community event? Hey, why don't you come perform at this festival? Hey, I'm doing this thing at my school. And then when I perform, I think live performance really sells everything. Myself and DJ Eminent, like it sells everything because they see how real it is and the spirit behind it once again. So then more doors begin to open. And I encourage more people to take that organic route, you know. I, I really do. You don't need a record label. You don't need anything but yourself. And, and other people that believe in you. And, and that's what I've, I'm speaking from from experience. And, and like I said, I encourage other people to do the same. So how do you feel about artists who you may view as your peers or who are a part of, you know, the same genre and the same pursuit that you're interested in? For example, I would mention someone like Andy Minio. Mm-hmm. Um, how do I feel about them? Um, well, first of all, um, I want to make sure that we get this clear. I am not by any means a Christian hip-hop artist or secluded right. to a Christian hip-hop genre. Um, with that being said, I absolutely adore Christian hip-hop. I love Christian hip-hop. Um, same token, I'm not you know, necessarily a secular artist. I'm not uh, just a hip-hop artist. I'm an artist. That's what I am. And whatever I feel in my heart at a specific time, I'm going to say it. And that's being that's being completely real. But first of all, I'll start with Andy Mineo. He's been able to do some phenomenal things. And anybody that's out there listening that has not heard of him, I would encourage to go listen to him. 
um, from, you know, the type of music he's putting out, from the from the versatility to the amount of records that he sold with his project. Like, I love it. So the way I feel about other artists in Christian hip-hop, I love the movement, and I love that it's growing, and I love that Lecrae has won a Grammy because that has just opened more listeners' ears and expanded music even more. Because to a certain extent, you know, Lecrae and Reach Records and Andy Manel, that's an independent label, you know. So for that to be so worldwide right now and such a, a strong movement, I love it. Um, so I feel so strongly about the Christian hip-hop movement. Um, and actually, I'm, I've, I've never intended my music to really fall into that bucket. It, they just embraced me. And I'm, I'm truly blessed that the Christian hip-hop market has embraced my music as well as churches opening the doors to, to allow me to perform and, and minister to, to the people in, in, on that platform. Um, but like I said in one of my songs uh, named Click, I said I took the church to the club, the club to the church. Heard it ain't been done before, so I went and did it first. And I think that that in itself explains my whole movement as, as a whole. It's not about the people. And uh, if I may touch on spirituality a little bit, we're all familiar with the man up top, Jesus Christ. Like, he wasn't hanging out necessarily in the church all day. He was in the bar. He was in the street. He was out there with the people that really needed it. And, and that's what I feel like is going to really make the difference uh, with my music and, and anyone that's coming up these days. It's going to be you have to keep it real and you have to take it to the people. So talk to me more about how you stay grounded in your faith and what do you do in order to not let all the noise and the chatter get to you. <laughs> um, well, Staying grounded, staying grounded. Well, first and foremost, I keep I keep God first in everything. I I do my best to to hold my faith very strong um, and have that connection with Him. I, you know, it's not necessarily about what we read all the time. It's about you know when we actually sit down and speak to the man. And um, what keeps me grounded is really remembering what I'm doing it for. I think I think that's what really keeps me grounded. Um, sometimes I do get off course. I'm not gonna lie. I just I get a little frustrated. I'm working on that. Um, you know, I, I want things to happen, you know, how everybody does, but they don't necessarily happen that way. And, but when I do sit down and think about it at the end of the day, I'm able to, you know, think about my day and say, hey, you know, guess what? Such and such walked up to you. True story, by the way. Uh, before your performance or after your performance, and said, you know, hey, man, my head was throbbing today. It was, I had an excruciating pain, headache. I was in and out of the hospital because I got a brain tumor. And today I feel healed after your performance. And that right there is what I'm trying to say. That's everything to me. That right there can make can fuel me for the next week. I don't have to eat. I don't have to sleep. Just knowing that I was able somehow, some way to connect with somebody and, and help them and potentially heal a brain tumor, like, you know, that's, I don't know, man. That's, that's everything for me. So that's how I stay grounded in and uh, and just remember where I came from and where where I'm at now and where I'm trying to go. So as you're out there and you're being a blessing and you're moving through life with a purpose and a direction, you've been fortunate enough to link up and connect with someone that a lot of us admire, his work, Jacob Israel of 39 Lashes mm -hmm. Media. So how did that come together? Oh, absolutely. That's my guy. I'm, I'm, that's my guy. Anybody that needs video production needs to work with Jacob Israel, um, first and foremost. But um, I, he, he's, he's, he's an awesome artist. His visual concepts are, are amazing. How I came across him, I think, um, I think I saw something of his on the Internet, on Twitter, something like that. I don't remember how, but I met him at um, Flavor Fest in Tampa um, at Crossover Church, great church. Um, I met him at Flavor Fest, and my brother, I think my little brother, walked up to him and passed, him out, passed out one of my flyers to him. You know, we were out there working, and he was like, oh, I know your brother. So I think he, he, I saw him later that evening or something, and we just connected. And from the moment we shook hands, it was just all love. It was just all love. And... Um, we discussed a couple things. It wasn't the right time at that moment, but we we linked up again uh, shortly thereafter, and we came together on the concept for my uh, for my visual of "Do You Have a Dream?" Um, so 
We put that out, and, I mean, the concept, like, I had an idea of what I wanted to do, and he just took it so much further, you know, and I'm so grateful for that because Do You Have a Dream ended up being a whole story. It's a short film. So, um, like I said, Jacob Israel is a pioneer, and, and a lot of people don't know him yet. A lot of people do, but still, the, the masses don't, and they will. And I think a lot of that has to do with, with some of the stuff that we're working on together because um, that man is, is very talented. So if you need some video production, hit up Jacob Israel. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with, like, uh, pardon me, Dr. Mike Murdoch at all, but I actually have a few principles of his that I wanted to share, different quotations and it relates to the idea of, you know, co-laboring and building a team and really taking a moment to evaluate your relationships, who it is that you connect with. So I'll go through a couple of them, and then maybe you could share how you've personally experienced this or give us some clarity on what we can do to continue to, move towards a direction where our relationships glorify God the Father. All right. So every relationship is a current that sweeps you toward your assignment or moves you away from it. Each friendship is comfortable with your present or compatible with your future. The Holy Spirit alone can direct you to the right people who will assist you in completing your assignment. Those who don't make deposits eventually make withdrawals from you. And those who desire God will recognize the God within you. So I think it's interesting that A lot of times we engage with one another, we talk, and it's very casual, and we don't realize the ramifications of it. But it's important to actually take time and review where has this conversation been leading me to, whether it's somebody that you view as a best friend that you've known for years, or... It could be an individual that you're just getting acquainted with for the first time. Hmm. How do you feel as though having the right team has solidified your movement? Mm. Mm. <laughs> that's a powerful question. And, and I'm certain that anybody that knows my movement and that's listening right now knows exactly what I'm about to say. And, what I'll say is I, I went through a lot in reference to my team. When I started Next Level, I was the only one that really, you know, I was talking crazy to, to everybody, you know, that, oh, I got this big idea. I want to do this, that, and that. People were like, yeah, okay, man. Yeah, right, you know. And uh, it was funny. You know, I didn't stop, and, and, and I kept going. I gathered a team together, which I thought was, you know, going to be those guys, the, you know, that that boat. That crew, that 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 group, that was it. And it uh, turned out a few, you know, years later, you know, God showed me some things and, and really had to remove everybody that I had around me, for the most part, away. And I had to make a decision what it is I wanted to do, whether I wanted to keep up with the Joneses, hang out, or if I wanted to really take my gift to where it really belongs. And what I mean by that is the team is most important. As I keep saying, throughout this interview, the people, the people, the people. Like, that's it. I do not rise on anything else besides people's shoulders. That's it. People make me me who I am. And um, the team is the number one thing, uh, uh, number one on the list of importance. You have to have the right team. I think that, like you were saying, you know, God will show you. He'll show you who you need to have around you if you pay attention. You know, a lot of us just, you know, have our heads down too, too long. We can't see the light. And um, recently I had a discussion with, with, my, with my guy, my partner, DJ Eminent. We were in the studio the other day finishing up the Verse 1 mixtape. Um, and 
I said, listen, man, this next project after verse one, when we work on the album that's coming out in August, I said, you know, I'm glad that we can give them this to listen to for about a month, but we have to give them that real when this, this album in August comes out. So we were sitting there discussing, and I was like, what do you think is going to give us that, that, that true essence of what that is? Um, and he, he and I continued to converse, and what we came to was that we had to do it together ourselves, me and him. We had to really lock ourselves in, in our studio and really put this project together because you have to have those people involved in what you're doing that truly believe and truly want what you, what you want. You know, you, anybody can go to the studio. Anybody can work with producers. Anybody can, uh, you know, promote. Anybody can, you know, say hoorah. Anybody can do that. But if you really want to find the essence of what you're trying to do and build with a team, you've got to have the right people. So, like I said, he's as excited about what I'm doing as I'm as excited about what he's doing. So what that does is brings us to a whole other level, and that's what the next level is about, constantly finding how do you how do you retire? You know, how do you find that next thing? How do you how are we going to really dig deeper and, and find that real and motivate that next person? You know, uh, you know, it's not about us. You know, it's about the people, and 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 the team is what's going to get that done. So as we grow, you know, the team will, will expand. Right now, we pretty much do everything ourselves, but that's okay. Like the faith is there. Every relationship, like you said, will bring us closer um, and, and and build a stronger bond. So. So yeah, I, I, I really uh I can dig Mr. Murdoch, Dr. Murdoch's uh, quote there, and and that's deep. I hope you can send that to me after this interview. I would love to read that and post that. That's that's deep. Well, I appreciate you being willing to even give us a sneak peek at uh, behind the scenes, so to speak, at what takes place when it comes to being in the studio as far as your process. I know a lot of artists are not willing to give. Too much detail because then the competition is listening at the same time, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I hear that a lot, and um, and it's interesting you say that. I don't believe that there's any competition for myself, you know. And I think that if more artists or more people just take that approach, you understand that your gift is your gift, you know. It's just you stand in that alone. You were made to be who you were made to be. There's nobody that can take that away from you. And up to a, to a certain extent, people can. Steal your flow, quote unquote. Cramp your style, quote unquote. Okay, I get that. But if you're if you're really that good, you know it can't be duplicated. It's just what it is. And uh, I, I I enjoy giving people a a, a behind the scenes look and and a, a sneak peek of what we have going on. Of course, you can't give everything because that would defeat the purpose of what you're working on. But um, I definitely don't see any competition. So how much of it are you actually handling yourself as far as, you know, mixing, mastering, and setting up studio time? Hmm. Um, As far as the studio part, my first album, my EP, rather, E-Main is coming back last August. That was all all the the production and whatnot was done by uh, Drummer Boy Studios, E.J. Porter, um, and Rod Lavender with Wiz Production uh, in Sarasota, Florida. That the production side of things, you know, I produced the entire EP. I produced the vision was mine and all that with the help of theirs. But um, as far as the technical side of it, engineering the whole project, I I don't touch that. I I'm not. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> not yet, at least. Uh, but production, producing, as far as like the vision, that was mine. But the actual studio work uh, was done by them. Now, as far as um, the next project, um, you know, myself and DJ Eminent that we're working on, he's going to be doing a, the majority of that with the help of others if we need. Um, but everything else as far as writing, uh, ideas, visuals, um, promotion, my website, managing the Facebook, the Twitter, uh, out there in the streets promoting the music, uh, everything you can think of that pertains to what E-Man is, and what you hear, I do it. And what you see, I do it. Like, as crazy as that sounds, I do it. I do it all. DJ Eminent is, and I are really discussing, you know, getting some, some other people involved in, in more smart work. But thus far, I'm literally sitting in the studio at my 
my house right now um, and looking at all these boxes in here. Like, this is this is what it's about, though. Like, this is, I have merch, T-shirts, flyers, CDs, you know, books, marketing books, music business books, you know, and that's what it's about, though. You know, I, we're, in, we're in the learning process and we're growing, and, and we're okay with that because it's going to make us appreciate what we're doing that much more when we have arrived at that certain point where we can continue to rise to the next one. But, you know, I'm cool with that. Now I want to take a different path, a little detour for a second, since you alluded to it earlier about how you don't consider yourself to be a Christian hip-hop artist. So what do you consider yourself? Are you forming a brand new genre that nobody's ever seen before? Good question, good question. I'm a voice. That's what I am. I'm a voice. Um, that's what I believe my gift is. Uh, the mission is to inspire. I'm a voice. As far as the genre, I love hip-hop. I grew up listening to hip-hop, you know. Um, I love all types of hip-hop. I listen to all types of hip-hop. Um, but the genre that I love to play in is not just hip-hop. I, I, I listen to all types of other music, you know. We're working on the next project with some hip-hop sounds, some pop rock sounds, some pop sounds, some R&B flavor, some uh, dubstep even. You know, I embody music. I love music. I grew up around. My mom used to sing Anita Baker to me every day. Um, Fill the time in, you know. I, I was just performing in Germany uh, a week and a half ago uh, doing a 1970s show I was hosting uh, with Soul Crooners, with Nate Jacobs in the West Coast Black Theater Troupe. So, um Music is music to me, honestly. If I feel inspired by something, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say what I want to say. Um, it's probably going to resonate with somebody. And um, But, you know, I think that that in itself uh, keeps me so open and, and, and allows me to tap into other genres and for people to really respect what I'm doing because they see no boundaries on it. I have put no limits on it, so they don't. And that, that allows it to open up so much wider. Um, I was just talking to my man, Billy, uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, we are talking about another big-name band that's, that's from my city. Their name is We The King, and they're, they're, on, a, they're on a world tour right now. Uh, they're a pop rock band, but their sound is some of the stuff that we, we want to embody, and we're from the same town, so it'll be a big, big thing. Uh, Mac Lamore and Ryan Lewis, as you can see, they're independent grind right now, what they're doing globally. You cannot tell me that Mac Lamore doesn't have God all over him like the stuff that I hear in his, in his album and, and some of the things that he even proclaims in interviews that I listen to. So we actually um, love his style of, uh, of of his branding and what he's doing. And we, we, we definitely uh, take bits and pieces from that too. So um, that that's what I can say as far as the genre. Uh, any, any genre I feel inspired by, I'm going to do it. And I think that uh, we'll do it in a way that people will still be able to follow it. You know, we won't just jump off the bridge like, hey, here's a totally new thing. I think that people will be able to follow us with uh, the music as it goes. And on your YouTube channel, you actually have some highlights of your travels and where God has brought you as far as live performances go. You've even included a little hinting at the importance of faith in your life as well with the teaser or the clip of the prophecy. That's right. That's right. Um, so was that a recording that was actually captured at your home church or your synagogue or temple? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, it was at my church, West Coast Center for Human Development in Sarasota, Florida, ran by Bishop Henry L. Porter. That's my main man, my spiritual leader. Um, it was it's, it's definitely a real clip <laughs> for those that may not uh, – uh, may have thought it was or it wasn't, I don't know. But um and I could certainly understand if they didn't, but I didn't believe in that stuff before it happened to me. But the prophecy is real. Um not saying that all prophets are real, but but my prophecy is real. <laughs> and um that clip right there is important to me. And you, I think I'll give a little hint to what's coming on Tuesday with verse one when we drop that Tuesday. That prophecy continues, you know. It's important to me. It's, it is a big part of my life, and uh, I encourage more people to, to check out that video if they haven't seen it. 
but uh, and also encourage more people to visit West Coast Center for Human Development. Um, you know, spirituality is is big for me. Not not religion, not religion. Spirituality is big for me. Having that connection with a higher source is big to me. Understanding that you're not the biggest thing walking around. That's for anybody. I encourage that. You don't have to call that God. You can call it whatever. You know, I feel like God will get to you eventually. But um, spirituality is a very big thing to me, and I think that that's what keeps me moving and also has me having the ability to move at a rapid pace. You know, like I said, this is all just started a year ago for me. Uh, so what that is is I'm not afraid to jump off that bridge. I'll jump off that bridge knowing that I'm going to be okay. I, I'll jump. I'll fly to Vegas with $40 in my pocket, which I have done, just to go meet somebody that I think that may have potential to boost this career even further. I'll, I'll fly to Puerto Rico, go to China uh, with a two-hour gap. I'll, I'll, I'll do these things. That's me. But I think that I'm able to do those things with, with com- in a comfortable sense and, 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 and understand that that's okay. I can do it because my faith is going to carry me. So, yeah, um, the prophecy is real. And would you say that having that covering, that spiritual covering that mantle helps to energize you as well and it gives you a motivation that normally people don't necessarily have? Um, yeah, yes and no. Um, it definitely gives me an edge. It definitely does um, that I encourage more people to tap into in their own time. No rush, nothing like that. But I'll say this. I had this energy before, you know, I started – uh, this this new recent path or whatever. Like I was always, I always believed in myself. You know, I always knew that I was going to be greater than what you know statistics said or or what the world says we're supposed to do. Like I always knew that. I told my mom when I was eight, I'm the chosen one. I told her. She looked at me. She grabbed me. She was like, "What are you talking about?" I was like, "Listen, I'm the chosen one." And I don't know why I told her that, but I just knew it. And that's not to say that I was above anybody else. That just means that I knew that I was able to accomplish more than what. The average says we are going to do. So uh, my energy is, is definitely relentless, uh, tenacious, nice, and, and, and uh, I believe that I encourage more people to tap into that side of themselves. I think it's in everyone. Um, I grew up um, in a Hebrew day school. I speak Hebrew. I've been to Israel three times. I had a bar mitzvah. So I come from a different path, but I was always open to people. You know, my best friend when I was little – was the most non-popular person in my school. I was the class president in the fifth grade, and the school went up to eighth grade. But my friend was the kid that was always picked on. That was my best friend, and I didn't care what anybody said. So I've always been a person that really just loved people and always embraced people and just understood that, hey, we can do this, and we can do it together. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from what obstacles you face, it doesn't matter. We all have stories. We all have obstacles. E-Man's not the the greatest. You know, like, hey, look at me. I, I'm the only one. No. My mission is to encourage other people to do it too. You you can do it too. You know, just, just step out on that faith. Um, trust yourself. Trust those around you. And don't say no before you try. And don't, last but not least, do not say, oh, I can't do it because of money. Please don't. Don't, don't hinder yourself like that. Just do it. The money will come, and uh, everything else you need, all the resources will come as well. Well, this has been a wonderful time, and I don't want to leave without giving you the opportunity to share where people can connect with you. Oh, definitely. I appreciate that. Um, um, you can connect with me via Twitter, number one, Uh at E-Man is Coming, at sign, E-Man is Coming, E-M-A-N-I-S-C-O-M-I-N-G, E-Man is Coming. E-Man is Coming dot com, uh, E-Man is Coming on Facebook, uh, everything's E-Man is Coming. Google E-Man is Coming, uh, you know, if you come across my number on there, you can text me, <laughs> you know, you you can text me. I, you, I may not answer the phone if you call, but I definitely work through text. Um, they're definitely very approachable. Uh, and I, and, I, and I really appreciate this interview. It, it gives us the opportunity to connect with people more and uh, definitely let them know that I'm approachable and, and, and understand where I'm coming from. So I appreciate you for having me, and, and I think what you're doing is wonderful. I think it's, it's, been, it's definitely honorable, 
and definitely that you that you know what you're standing on, and you're inspiring people with this with this outlet. So I appreciate what you're doing. Well, thank you again, and I think I would be you know a fool not to leave everyone with a snippet of preach, right? <laughs> you definitely got to do that. All right, so I'll leave that as our closing. Take care. Sounds good. Download the verse one mixtape Tuesday. Thank you all. Take care. Don't call-